The 2019 Stanley Cup playoffs have officially begun, and the VGK bug eye guy missed his first ever playoff game for the Vegas Golden Knights last night because it's spring break, and the family decided to take a vacation to San Diego, California. <sighs> All right, folks. This is going to be a unique podcast because I'm recording on location from the beach in San Diego. But welcome to episode 39 of... Welcome to Knights Nation, an unofficial podcast discussing all things Vegas Golden Knights. A show designed for the fans by a fan. Produced locally in Las Vegas, Nevada. Home of the Fortress. Weekly episodes include segments Numbers Don't Lie, VGK Rewind, and What the Puck. And now, here's your host, the VGK Bug Eye Guy. What's going on, Vegas? Go! Knights fans, and welcome to episode 39 of the Knights Nation podcast. My name's Nick, the VGK Bug Eye Guy, and welcome. So, the playoffs have officially started. Who's excited? Who's pumped up? I know me, the Bug Eye Guy, I'm super, super ready for the playoffs. Now, the last couple weeks of the regular season saw our Vegas Golden Knights struggle a little bit. And honestly, we already had the third seed locked up. There wasn't really a chance to move up in the standings. Uh, Gallant gave a couple players some rest. Uh, Fleury had just come back. And you know what? I'm okay with that. As long as the Golden Knights were ready for the playoffs. Well, in this episode, we're not going to do a lot of the segments that you guys are normally used to. For one, it's because I'm recording this as we speak from my pickup truck outside my hotel room. Couldn't find a quiet spot to do it. Knew I had to get a podcast out, even though I'm on vacation, so I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm not going to do Banged Up Golden Knights because, hey, guess what? Banged Up Golden Knights, everyone's pretty much healthy, except Howla, and Howla's been skating every day, so that's enough for Banged Up Golden Knights. Now, random news from around the league. Sure, I could go into the Tampa Bay Lightning, the President's Trophy winning team, uh, down three games to nothing against the Columbus Blue Jackets. For you fans that have been listening to my podcast for a while, you guys know I was very, like, not confrontational, but I was very suspect and questioned some of the decisions that the uh, management folks in Columbus did at the trade deadline. They they kept Panarin, they kept Bobrovsky, you know, and they traded for Duchesne, they traded for Zingle. I mean, they, they went all in with no guarantees. And the first one, they made the playoffs, so that's good. And then, of course, being in a wild card, you got to play the best team in the Tampa Bay Lightning, and they have brought it to the Tampa Bay Lightning for sure. That that could be huge. Tampa Bay, 120-plus points for the regular season and get knocked out, let alone possibly swept from a wild card team in the first round. That would be crazy news. And for any Western Conference team fan, uh, that's good news. We could talk about Pittsburgh. The Pittsburgh Penguins are also in a situation where they're one game away from getting eliminated from the playoffs. And they're going up against the Islanders. And the Islanders is a team that's been, you know, kind of all over the place for the last couple of years. But the big difference between the Islanders is they lost their captain, John Tavares, in the offseason. When you lose a player like that, the team comes together, especially the way he left. The team kind of bonded together. Then you take a coach like Barry Trotz, who uh, beat us last year in the cup finals with the Washington Capitals, bring him in, and all of a sudden the team's playing sound defense and they're winning games. And they're about to possibly kick Pittsburgh out of the playoffs. I mean, we can continue to talk about, let's say, the Calgary-Colorado series, which has been pretty good, or the Dallas series against Nashville, which has kind of been pretty good, or probably the most entertaining one besides Vegas-San Jose has been Winnipeg-St. Louis. St. Louis has looked money the first two games, and then they finally got past Bennington, and Winnipeg was able to put up six goals the other day, so... That series is two to one. That could be close. But you guys know, I'm the bug at guy. You guys are listening to the Knights Nation podcast. The best series, hands down, in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs has been Vegas versus San Jose. We kind of already knew that going in, but it has not disappointed. It's been tough. It's been physical. My only probably complaint, and I think Sharks fans would be on the same page, is that the officiating has been a little bit I don't want to say questionable, but the officiating has been challenging. And what I'm getting at is if you've watched any of the other series, it's the playoffs. They're letting a lot of stuff go. They're letting players play. 
The problem is, and I agree with the officiating, and I hate saying that, but with the Vegas Golden Knights San Jose series, if they let some of that stuff go, it's going to get to the point where the refs aren't going to be able to control the game. So I understand why maybe in our series they're being a little bit more cautious on what they're going to call and what they're not going to call. But let's be real. There's been some uh, sticks to the throat again. Um, there's been some boarding hits, but not really. The big one, obviously, was in Game 3, and I'm going to talk about that during BGK Rewind. But Game 3, Old Man Thornton, Grandpa Daddy Shark, Grandpa Shark. Grandpa Shark, do 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 Grandpa Shark, do 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 Grandpa Shark, do 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 Grandpa Shark. Had a hit in the back corner on Thomas Nosek, and he took a shoulder right to Nosek's head. I mean, it was blatant. He knew exactly what he was doing. he done it deliberate. And all he got was a two-minute penalty. A two-minute penalty for head contact. Seriously, Nosek could have been really, really fucked up from that play. But no, a two-minute penalty. And as I'm recording this podcast Wednesday, or I'm sorry, Wednesday, Monday afternoon, it's like 2.30 Monday afternoon, I'm recording this podcast from San Diego in my pickup truck, and I still have not heard anything from the, the NHL player safety to see if Thornton's suspended or not. Honestly, he should get at least one game, probably a couple games. That was dirty. That was unacceptable. And then later in that game, of course, you know, Reeves and Evander Kane have been jawing back and forth for, for quite some time. And it's gotten to the point now where I think Evander Kane really needs to just, uh, you know, he had to. He didn't have a choice. He had to go out there and he had to drop the gloves with Reeves. In the regular season, those two have been running their mouths. Games one and game two. They've been running their mouths. And Reeves is sitting on the bench going, look, I know you might be a good goal scorer, Evander Kane, but you keep running your mouth and acting all tough when you're on the ice, but as soon as I get on the ice, all of a sudden you back down. Well, it finally happened. Gallant knew. He knew what was going on. He's like, Kane's out there. I'm throwing Revo out there. And they kind of bang sticks a little bit, and finally they're like, we got to go. Evander Kane's thinking, I got to try and take down the biggest, toughest SOB in the league. And they connected back and forth. I mean, I'm not going to say Kane got smoked, Kane connected on a couple punches, but Reeves connected on a bunch of punches too, and Reeves ended up being on top at the end. So the way you want to score it, depending if you're a Sharks fan or a Knights fan, either way, that was a fight that had to happen. Now the questionable thing is going to be what happens going into Game 4. Now that that fight has taken place, is Kane still going to run his mouth? Because you know Reeves is going to be like, dude, I'll beat your ass again. I mean, so Game 4, Game 4 is going to be very, very crucial. All right, that's about it for... uh, Random news from around the league, if you want to call it that. I'm not even doing my intro for that because that will take too much time while I'm recording this on the road. What do we do after that? Normally, we do VGK Rewind, but pretty much this whole podcast is going to be me talking about the three playoff games. So before we dive into VGK Rewind, good, bad, and ugly. Not going to do good, bad, and ugly this week other than good has been the Vegas Golden Knights' performance in Games 2 and Games 3. Um, the bad would probably be stupid penalties. I mean, honestly, some of the penalties are just uncalled for and it's the playoffs folks. I've been saying it for weeks, the playoffs, you got to stay out of the penalty box and you got to score when you're on the power play. Special teams is crucial because, and some of you guys are thinking that's not true, bug eye guy, but what I'm saying is normally power plays are hard to come by in the playoffs. Normally. In some of the other series, yeah, they're few and far between. Now, I know San Jose had like nine in game two, and I get it. That's why we need to stay disciplined. We got to stay out of the box. But yeah, nine nine power plays for San Jose. Now, the good thing about game two, you know, they only scored one. One out of nine. That's not very good. Especially when you factor in that the Vegas Golden Knights had two shorties in that game. But the ugly, I guess I would go with the ugly as um, ugly Tampa Bay. Ugly Pittsburgh Penguins. I mean, for the Vegas Golden Knights, there hasn't really been anything ugly. I mean, some ugly hits, some... But no, I mean, for the most part, the ugly right now and good, bad, and ugly would have to be the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Pittsburgh Penguins on the verge of getting swept out of the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs, especially Tampa Bay. That's just terrible. And Kucherov got suspended for the hit. That's not good. Kadri up in Toronto, he got suspended for a hit. That's not good. And Grandpa Thornton might be getting suspended as well. So, hey, you know what? It is what it is. All right, let me check out my notes here because this is rare. I've never really done this recording like this, and the editing is going to be a pain in the ass. But I apologize. Vegas Golden Knights fans, fans of the Knights Nation podcast, look, I'm on vacation. It's spring break for my kids. I'm at the beach hanging out. 
and I'm taking time out of my day to go sit in my pickup truck with the air conditioner running, recording episode 39 of Night's Nation podcast. I could have just missed this week, but why? The big thing about having a podcast and the big thing about fans is making sure you're consistent. Make sure you're giving the fans what they want. So, yes, technically this podcast won't be the best edited. Yes, this podcast is going to be a little rough around the edges. You're going to probably have some pauses because I'm th- trying to think of what the heck I'm going to say. Because I'm not in my home studio, I'm not looking at my big monitor, I'm not looking at my recording, I'm not able to pause and cut out a burp or pause and cut out a fart or pause and cut out a whatever, an um. Just not going to be able to do that here. So if I was going to do a uh, funny bleep fan say this week, uh, I don't know. That would be a tough segment to do because a lot of people were freaking out after game one. And then, of course, game two and game three, everyone's back on the bandwagon. So I'm glad I'm not doing that segment this week either because uh, we don't need it. So really. What do we have left? We got to talk about games one, two, and three and possible uh, what's going to happen, I think, for tomorrow in game four. But we got to talk about the big elephant in the room first. If you're a fan of the podcast and have been listening longer than a month or two, you'll know I've been talking about Nikita Gusev for a while now. Nikita Gusev is the KHL, Continental Hockey League, Russia Player of the Year. He tore it up at the Olympics last year. He is a very, very good player. And the Vegas Golden Knights acquired his his rights during the expansion draft with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yes, believe it or not, Nikita Gusev could have been joining the Tampa Bay Lightning had they still had his rights. That's crazy, right? Now, Gusev, I know some of you guys are freaking out because you're thinking, wait a minute, he came from SKA St. Petersburg over in the KHL. That's where uh, Vadim Shipashev, or as I like to refer to him as Vadim Shidashev, is over there. Now, there's a difference between Shipashev and Gusev as far as talent, skill. I mean, Shipashev is still a good player. He just, he needed time in the AHL. He needed time to get acclimated to the NHL game. The shorter rink, the narrow rink, he needed time. And and GM, GM George McPhee was like, dude, you got to go to AHL Chicago for a little bit. You got to get your feet wet. You got to learn our system and then come back. He would have come back, but he got butt hurt and didn't like it and got his you know, panties in a bunch and was like, I'm going back to Russia. I'm going to retire from the NHL. Well, I'm sure when he went back and was in the locker room with Scott St. Peak teammate Nikita Gusev, I'm sure he's going to NHL's bullshit. You don't want to go to Vegas. Vegas is a terrible place. It's a terrible place to live. He's probably telling him all this stuff. But Gusev's no dummy. He knows he's going to get paid. And Gusev's no dummy. He saw that the team went to the Stanley Cup Finals last year, and there's probably a roster spot for him on the third line. So why wouldn't he go and give it a shot? He's got a great stick work. He's got a killer shot. He's plays 200-foot game. And I know some of you fans are going, well, we got Carpenter and Peary and Nosik and Zykov. We got all those guys, but you're going to bring a brand-new player in from the Continental Hockey League, not even from North American Hockey you're going to bring him all the way over here and you're going to just throw him into the game? Yes, because he's a future star. I'm If you guys like Panarin in Columbus, they're comparing him to like a Panarin. If we can get a Radulov or Danov, I mean, there's a whole bunch of Russian players over here that it just works. Barkov. So, yes, I think you absolutely throw him in there. Give him a shot. We know what we got with Carpy. We know what we got with Nosik. We know what we got with Peary, unfortunately. I know I know you guys love Peary, but it's just... Look, if Eric Halla was cleared 100% and Eric Halla was says, yes, you can go back, then there's no question they're going to find a spot for Eric Halla as well. Sometimes getting that new player or a player that's been gone for a while can spark a little bit of energy, can spark a little bit of like pizzazz, can, can really fire up the team. And honestly, it's just one player. Look, game two, the fourth line had like six and a half minutes. It wasn't totally their fault because we were on the power play so much, on the penalty kill so much, but six minutes. So you can hide someone. Even if they're first game and they don't play that good, you can hide someone on the bench, and you're not going to kill your team. You're not going to kill your squad. So am I excited? Yes. Where do I think he's going to play? I think he's going to play his first Golden Knights game tomorrow, game four against the San Jose Sharks, and I think he fits in in no sixth spot. I think it'll be Eakin with Tuck and Gusev, at least to start out. Because obviously you can't touch the first or second lines, right? Well, definitely the second line after game three. We'll talk about that soon. All right. So Gusev coming over. Yes, I think it is a good move for the Golden Knights. 
Now, they burn up his first year of uh, eligibility as an entry-level contract, but they still have his rights for next year. It'll be a restricted free, uh, restricted contract. Uh, they'll have to pay him just a little bit more, but so what? If you have the chance to bring the Continental Hockey League, their best player over here to join your team for the playoffs, it can't hurt, right? I know some of you guys, if he doesn't do anything in game four, oh, wh- why did we Why did we play him? We should have played Nosek or Carpy. This new, this new Russian guy is not even that good. Or he does play and he scores or is, is phenomenal or, or just shows just enough for the fan base to be excited. And then you guys would be like, oh, man, we should have had him sooner. He's the greatest ever. I'm so happy. Oh, man, I, I can't wait for this goose. I got to get me a goose F jersey right now. Either way. It doesn't really matter. I'm just excited that general manager George McPhee, like he's done for two years now, has had the opportunity to make his team better and has pulled the trigger to do it. Now, this one doesn't cost us really any money, doesn't cost us any picks. It doesn't have any waiver issues. It's just a simple sign him, pay him for the X amount of games we play in the playoffs, and then next year you got to sign him again. And that is a sign that all the players should really – admire also and go look our gm is trying to make us even better we already think we're good and he's trying to make us better and there's nothing wrong with that unless if you're a no sick carpy peary fan and zikov fan and and you realize that your guys probably aren't going to play hey it is what it is all right that about wraps up pretty much everything i want to talk about in this week's podcast with the exception of the games now again I'm going to get audio and I'm going to get um, interviews, but I'm only going to do one interview from each game and I'm just going to get the goals because I'm going to have to be sitting here in my hotel getting this audio and I don't want to waste a bunch of time. And again, I'm going to stress this throughout this podcast. This is Nick, the bug eye guy recording this podcast in my pickup truck in San Diego. So I'm not going to go over the top on editing. I'm not going to go over the top on all my extra audio and make it all professional. I would love to, but I want to enjoy my vacation. So, that being said, we're about to dive into VGK Rewind. Once we get in there, we're going to talk about Game 1, Game 2, Game 3. Throughout that, I'm going to throw in um, some audio from just the goals scored for the Vegas Golden Knights in all three games, and then I'm going to pick one interview from each game at the end, okay? All right. Now, without further ado, let's get ready for the segment, the most important segment of the podcast, because it's really the nitty gritty of the show, right? Welcome to this week's episode. And now, BGK Rewind, a review and recap of last week's games. All right, welcome to VGK Rewind, game one. Game one is the first game we're going to talk about. Now, this is the first game of the 2019 Stanley Cup playoffs for the Vegas Golden Knights taking on the San Jose Sharks in the Shark Tank. Now, this game, all the pundits, believe it or not, for the most part, were taking Vegas for this series. San Jose had struggled coming into the playoffs, similar to what Vegas has. Now, the difference was San Jose still had their starting goalies. The Vegas Golden Knights were running Malcolm Subban at the end of the season. So we knew this was going to be tough. We knew this series was going to be physical, and the game one did not disappoint. Here's the problem. A couple minutes into the game, um, the San Jose score goal off of Joe Pavelski's face. It literally hit his face and then went into the net, took a weird bounce, went right into the net, They got the goal. Pavelski went right off the ice, came back a couple shifts later with this big plastic protecting thing, probably protecting his mouth or his jaw or something. Either way, I'm going, crap, here we go. The Vegas Golden Knights, we just started off. It's game one of the playoffs, and they get a lucky bounce. The Sharks do and score. Now, the problem with this game, so Pavelski scored in the first. It was a power play goal assisted by Brent Burns, and after one, we're down one to nothing. The second period is what really got me. The second period, Brent Burns scored 6.59 in, assisted by Eric Carlson and Thomas Hurdle. Now get used to this. You're going to hear this a a lot, folks. For whatever reason, Burns and Carlson were together. Marc-Andre Vlasic scored at 7.44, assisted by Thornton and Kane. Now the Vegas Golden Knights are down 3-0. I'm going, oh, here we go. But no. Mark Stone. Mark Stone scored his first goal, first of many so far in the playoffs, assisted by 
Paul Stasny and Max Pacioretty. The second line, all three of them got a point on that goal. Right towards the end of the second period, unfortunately, with 20-something seconds left, Evander Kane scored the goal to make it 4-1. to one. Really? 4-1 to one after two periods in game one of the playoffs. Third period, 15-26, another power play goal. This time it was from Mark Stone, assisted by Pacioretty and Shea Theodore. So at least the Vegas Golden Knights are close, right? No, unfortunately, empty netter at the end. Vegas Golden Knights end up losing 5-2. to two. The only two goals were by Mark Stone. Take a quick listen to the audio of both his goals. Schmidt to Theodore. Back to Schmidt again. Kicks it up from his skate to his stick. Power plays over. Pacioretty set it up. Score! Mark Stone on the back door. Just as the power play came to an end. And Mark Stone's first to the playoffs. Has the Golden Knights within two. Theodore feeds it down to Pacioretty. Max Pacioretty has been held without a shot tonight. Stone scores! He put it off the post and in. A power play goal. He has both goals for Vegas to get them within two. Well, they needed to... Now, as far as shots on goal for the game overall, Vegas had 26 and San Jose had 33. Faceoffs, this is where I thought we might struggle in the playoffs. Actually, in game one, it was even 34 apiece for each team. Power plays, Vegas was one for four. San Jose was one for five. Hits. This was funny. During the game, I was actually posting on Twitter and stuff to hits. It ended up being 43 to 42. San Jose out hit Vegas by one. 43 hits to 42. That's a lot. And then we talked about shots on goal. As far as the three stars of the game, Burns, Eric Carlson, and Joe Pavelski, of course, because it was up there. Uh, Attendance for game one was 17,562. And, yeah, so honestly, that was game one. How did I feel about it? I was nervous. I know the fan base was freaking out after that. They're like, oh, my God, it's not going to be as easy as we thought, and the Sharks are coming to play. That was true. I do think San Jose had a little extra giddy in their step, especially after getting knocked out of the playoffs last year against us. But I'm a firm believer that goaltending wins. And there was a couple bad breaks for Vegas in game one. But fast forward to game two. This is where you flip home ice. This is the second game up in San Jose. If Vegas has a chance to win this game, and if Vegas does, then there's five games left, and three of those five are in Vegas. So this is a very important game. This is also a very important game because the Vegas Golden Knights looked a little lethargic, looked a little, not nervous, but just, the energy and the effort wasn't quite there in game one. Fast forward to game two. Um, Game two was a completely different story. Now, what do you think the best way is to get under Martin Jones' skin? You got to score early. You got to get in his head. Because in game one, Vegas just didn't have a lot of shots. They really only had like 10 shots through two periods. A majority of their shots came in the third period when they were already down. And I know they practiced the day prior, but game two, Vegas came out, and they came out firing. Um, They actually scored a goal 58 seconds into the game. Cody Eakin assisted by Patches. All of a sudden, Vegas is up 1-0. Then Colin Miller takes a stupid penalty, and I'm thinking, okay, Holden had a bad game in game one. So I kind of assumed that they would bench Holden in game two and bring Miller in, which they did, which was probably the right decision. And then Miller takes a bonehead penalty, and I'm thinking, oh, crap. But the Vegas Golden Knights, they kill it off. And then Miller, as he comes out of the box, he gets the pass, and he comes in, and he gets a shorthanded goal, unassisted. Congratulations, Colin Miller. I was all mad at you like two minutes prior for taking a dumb penalty. And then you come out, and you give the Vegas Golden Knights a 2-0 lead. Not long after that, 6-11 into the game. Max Pacioretty, his first goal of the playoffs, assisted by Paul Stasny. That's three goals in six minutes and 11 seconds. What do you think happened, folks? Yep. Fourth time out of 14 matchups, I think. This is the fourth time Martin Jones has been pulled in a game against the Vegas Golden Knights. He didn't even make it seven minutes into the game. Now, here's the bad part. This was all in the first period. 
Vegas kind of broke down at the back end of the first period. They ended up letting in a goal by Logan Couture, Thomas Hurdle, and old man Grandpa Thornton. So after the first period, it's 3-3. Three to three. Vegas had all the momentum, and then San Jose stole it all from them. They took it right back. Now the good thing is, a minute and 31 into the second period, uh, Stone got a power play goal assisted by Paul Stasny and Alex Tuck. So now after the second period, and this was kind of a chippy game where they were going back and forth. There was a lot of hitting back and forth and a lot of tough physical play. After two, Vegas is up four to three. Now we go into the third period. Now this is the game. This is this was the dagger for sure. This was another shorthanded goal. But the cool thing about this one is this was Riley Smith and Wild Bill. Riley Smith's fighting for it in the boards. Wild Bill sees it, anticipates that Riley's going to win and beelines from the net the other way. Riley does, in fact, win the battle along the boards and dumps it out there for a breakaway, shorthanded Wild Bill. Wild Bill comes in. Now, it's not his buddy Martin Jones because he already got plucked earlier in the game. But Dell's sitting back there, and, and Wild Bill comes in, and he drags to the right, and he waits for Dell to dive down. And as soon as he does, he goes over the top of him, Boom, shorthanded goal. Vegas Golden Knights end up winning 5-2. to two. Here is the audio from Eakin, Miller, Patches, Stone, and Wild Bill's goals. Take a quick listen. Dig it out, feeds it in front, Pacioretty, and a save, Jones! Terrific chance for Max Pacioretty. Eakin, a rip shot, and he scores! Cody Eakin sticks on on Jones! 58 seconds into the game! Away. Al Thornton. Here's Miller out of the box. One man advantage now. And Miller with a steal. Up ice. Yes, Stastny with him in an on man rush. Miller walks into the zone. His shot. Score! Paul and Miller out of the box. A short handed goal. It's 2 0 Golden Knights. Up to center. Love down by Pacioretty. Back on it is Vlasic. Turned it over. Pacioretty intercepts after Stastny had blocked it. Pacioretty. Rich shot. Score! Max Pacioretty. Four side. And the Golden Knights are up 3-0, just over six minutes in. Here's Stastny in front to Tuck. And that didn't land for him on a bang-bang play as Stone fed it. Stastny fans out to the boards, banks it back for Theodore. Long wrist shot, save Dell, rebound, loose score! Mark Stone on the rebound, his third goal of the series on the power play. And the Golden Knights have the lead again. Closing in, Burns around the horn for Thornton, wrist shot, I missed the net, it was a pass more than a shot. And now the Golden Knights the other way, Smith up ahead of William Carlson, has a step, short hand to the backhand, and he scores! William Carlson all alone, the Golden Knights second short-handed goal of the game, and they lead 5-3. to three. Now, Like I said, this game, as far as the stats face off, San Jose beat us a little bit, it was 34-31. to 31. This was the difference though. Vegas gave them every opportunity to win. And I'm talking about San Jose. Eight. I'm sorry, I said earlier it was nine. I apologize. That's what happens when you get a podcast in the car. It was eight power plays for San Jose, and they only scored on one. They scored on one. We scored on two of their power plays as shorthanded goals. Hits. Vegas got kind of crushed in the hits because 46 to 31. Here's the deal. This, the fourth line only played like six and a half minutes, and I know some of you guys are thinking, what's going on? Well, when I mean the fourth line, I'm not talking Belly because Belly killed a ridiculous amount of penalties. Reeves and Carrier, when you have 16 minutes of penalty kill, it's very hard to get your fourth line out there sometimes. That's why the numbers were off, and that's why in the hits department the number's off. As far as shots on goal, 37 for the Sharks, 23 for the Vegas Golden Knights, but – uh, ours counted. I mean, it just it is what it is. Now, if there's any Sharks fans listening to this podcast, um, hey, I'm open to any team listening. I know I'm not biased. It's just you're gonna get the perspective from a Vegas Golden Knights fan because this is a Knights Nation podcast. But anyways, there was a goaltender interference call in the second period, in which Logan Couture made contact with Mark Andre Fleury's head. Now, they scored the goal. They thought they had taken the lead, and they'd taken all the momentum. 
and unfortunately the goal the call was waved off. The goal was waved off, and then they issued a penalty for contact to Flowers' head. So they couldn't even challenge the goaltender interference call because a penalty was issued. Now, after the game, listening to their coach and some of the players, they were all butt hurt. They thought it was a good goal and it shouldn't have been a penalty because it was outside the crease, blah, blah, blah. And for Vegas Golden Knights fans, you guys know as well as I do, we always get screwed on goaltender interference calls. So I'm like, if we're going to get one, we're going to get one. Now, Gallant, Gallant was adamant that it was a good goal, that it was a good penalty and it should not have been a goal. And San Jose's coach was different. And honestly, I don't really care. I'm glad it wasn't a goal because right after that, that power play was when Mark Stone scored and took the lead. Now, I'm telling the bug eye wife, I'm going, look, babe, here's the deal. If for whatever reason they end up not counting that goal and we get a power play, we have to score. This is the most important power play because all this momentum of them thinking they just took the lead and then they don't get the lead and then they get a penalty and then we have the opportunity to take the lead. It's just a huge momentum shift and it worked out perfectly. I mean, that's where Stone scored his goal and Vegas did take the momentum and they really didn't look back. Now, after this game, here's my deal with the pundits. Like the pundits, they were all of Vegas prior to the series starting. And then after game one, they were all over San Jose. And then all of a sudden, they were back on the bandwagon with Vegas. And then factor in the fact that there was rumors that Nikita Gusev might have been able to play for game three, which in reality, after that long flight, there's just no way. But, hey, here's – let's see. Who do do you guys want to listen to? How about we do post-game interview with – how about Max Pacioretty? This is Max Pacioretty following the 5-2 victory – against the San Jose Sharks. I'm sorry, 5-3 to three victory against the San Jose Sharks in Game 2, Round 1, Stanley Cup playoffs. Here's what Patches had to say. Push two and on the penalty kill, and um, that's just the way it goes, and that's the way playoffs are, and that's why you have to stick with it and just worry about that next shift. This team hasn't taken a ton of penalties, but 52 penalty minutes. Is it, is it, kind of, are these penalties that can be corrected? Yeah, I, you know, I mentioned, I, I looked back at a couple of them in my head, and... and I'm thinking, uh, you know, you can't really help a couple of them. Obviously, a couple of them uh, you can, but at the same time, you know, we want to play a hard hockey game, and, and we have to just have a better gauge, I guess, for uh, the or a feel for where the game's at, and, and kind of every game writes a, you know, a little bit of a different story in terms of what they let go and, and what they're going to call. And it was obvious they were going to call a lot on both sides tonight, and uh, maybe we have to have a, a better gauge of that. Thanks, Max. Yeah. You have a reputation as a shooter, but there was a little bit of everything from your game tonight. You were good in the defensive zone. You were physical, hard on the forecheck. Is this the kind of game that you want to play as a playoff player? Yeah, definitely. I think I add a lot to this team, and I you know I've shown flashes of it this year, but I don't think it was constantly there. Um, would really like to have that, that one back at the end of the first period where where Kane was able to strip me, but at the same time, I thought our line created a lot of chances, a lot of momentum, and obviously we were able to uh, put the puck in the net, and that felt good. I don't know if you'll agree with me, but it's a split, but you still haven't as a group really played your best game. There were some, some big holes for you guys in this game. Does that kind of encourage you that you've got a lot more to give? A bit. We know, Yeah, we definitely know we have more to give. At the same time, uh, you know, playoffs, not everything's going to be perfect. There's a lot of good to take out of uh, this trip and this game especially. Um, but like you said, we do have room for improvement, and it's up to us in this room to to find that. And uh, you know, we really like uh, you know coming in here and, and splitting, and like you said, knowing that uh, we could be a little bit better, and uh, that's our goal next game. Now what is it like for you to be able to go to T-Mobile tied in this series? Yeah, you know, it, uh, just uh, thinking about uh, when we come out on the ice, it's going to be a lot of fun. So. Um, Got to make sure we harness that energy and, and make sure we try and use our ring to our advantage. Overall, this was a game that was very stressful to watch, especially when San Jose came back in the first period. It was like Vegas Gold Knights fans were like, oh, thank God, this is the team. They're back. They're playing night hockey. And then all of a sudden it's like, holy crap, what happened? We had a 3 nothing lead, and now it's tied. This was a gut-wrenching. This was just a good team win for the Vegas Golden Knights. They 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 put it behind them, and they says, you know what? Let's just go out there and let's just play night hockey, and that's what they did. The only issue, the huge issue that I have with game two was the penalties. 
Now, do I agree with all of them? Some of them were legit penalties. I mean, if you're watching um, the Pittsburgh Islanders series or the Capitals series, they're not being called. But I talked about it earlier. They want to keep this series in check because of the teams and the physicality. I get it. I understand. But the penalties, that was kind of out of control. Eight power plays for the Sharks. Honestly, with the Sharks and their power play, their number one unit, as good as it is, the fact that they had eight power plays and we scored more shorthanded goals than they scored power play goals, not very good, San Jose. And I'm okay with you not being very good because we left game two in your house, series tied 1-1, heading back to the Fortress for game three. Now, game three. Happened on Sunday night. The bug eye guy left town Sunday morning because we decided to book a vacation down in San Diego during spring break. Cool. We forgot about playoffs, right? Yeah. So the bug eye guy over the last couple of weeks has been a little butthurt. I've been a little bent. I've been a little upset because I knew I was going to miss these games. I'm going to miss games three and four. I'm out of town. It is what it is. And then, of course, last night. So I'm at the hotel. We're getting ready to watch the game. And they do this. Well, actually, I was technically watching it on YouTube or streaming it on Facebook. One of the two. Someone was streaming it live to watch the entrance. Because, of course, on NBCSN, they got all these stupid commercials and all this stuff they got to do. And they don't even show, like, our national anthem or none of that stuff. So I was watching it on the Facebook. And it was cool. And when they did all those lights, I'm a little upset. And then they did the whole pregame festivities, and I'm, like, even more upset. And I'm going, ah, we should be there. We're season ticket holders. Why are we doing this? I'm supposed to be relaxing here at the beach. Instead, I'm agitated because I'm missing the game, and I'm watching from a hotel TV. And I'm just like, ugh. But here's the good thing. The good thing is, is the bug eye guy got into a pretty good mood pretty early. Now, when I say early, I'm talking like 16 seconds into the game. Yeah, that's all it took. We won the faceoff. We kind of passed it to the back, and eventually Schmidt and Anglin kind of passed it around. And then they passed it to Mark Stone, and Mark Stone came right up the middle. 16 seconds into the game, he scored his fourth goal of the playoffs. His fourth goal in three games. Assisted by Schmidt and Anglin. And all of a sudden, the Vegas Golden Knights are leading one to nothing. Martin Jones has got to be thinking, are you shitting me after this last game I got pulled and now I give up a goal 16 seconds into it? Well, don't worry, dude, because Vegas Golden Knights get a power play goal 12-16 into the first period, and now the Vegas Golden Knights are winning 2-1. to one. Power play goal assisted by Theodore and Paul Stasny. I'm going, all right, Stone got a goal. Uh, Pacioretty got a goal. Uh, is it Stasny's turn? Well, unfortunately, Kevin LeBanc scored – assisted by Joe Thornton Sorensen, 15-26 in the first period. And after the first period, the Vegas Golden Knights had a 2-1 to one lead going into it. Vegas looked good. They looked fresh. They looked excited. The crowd was loud and proud and was into it. Second period. Now, Mark Stone trying to show off, scoring 16 seconds into the first period. Unfortunately, yeah, Stone scored. Patches scored. Who's their other line mate? Paul Stasny, right? Paul Stasny, unacceptable, dude. It took you 21 seconds into the second period to score your first goal of the playoffs. Assisted by, guess what, Max Pacioretty and Mark Stone. So 21 seconds into the second period, and all three members of the second line, Stone, Patches, Stasny, all three of them have a goal. Stasny trying to show up the other two line mates. 1604 gets a power play goal assisted by Mark Stone and Shea Theodore. And now all of a sudden, the Vegas Golden Knights are up 4-1. to 4-1 to one sounds pretty good, right? Well, third period. Now, the third period starts. The teams are jawing. They've been jawing for most of the game. First period, Stone scored 16 seconds in. Second period, Stasny scored 21 seconds in. Well, Stone must have been wasting some time because, unfortunately, to start the third period, Mark Stone scores 36 seconds into the third period, assisted by Marchie and Paul Stasny to give him his fifth goal of the playoffs. Fifth goal in three seasons. Uh, trade deadline acquisition winners, Vegas Golden Knights, duh. Now, the Vegas Golden Knights did kind of break down 
between 457 and 551 of the third period. Logan Contour got a power play goal assisted by Eric Carlson and Martin Jones. Now, the problem with this one is this was kind of nabber. You can't really blame Brady McNabb. McNabb was playing the passing zone. Unfortunately, the puck, he did connect with it as they were passing. He broke it up. Unfortunately, he broke it right through the five hole of Marc-Andre Fleury. You know, Logan Couture ended up getting credit. Really, Braden McNabb scored an own goal. And I know a lot of you guys are probably pissed off. McNabb was phenomenal in game two. He single-handedly kept us in the game by making some amazing saves. These kind of plays happen. He doesn't want to do it on purpose. He didn't mean to do it. It just kind of happened. It is what it is. It's one of those things that... You know, every once in a while as a defender, it's going to go off of your skate or it's going to go off your back and bounce in. This was Nabbers. Luckily, we still had a pretty good lead. Unfortunately, not even a minute later, Timo Meyer he got a goal assisted by Nyquist, and now all of a sudden San Jose had two goals in a minute, and they're coming back. And all of a sudden it's now a 5-3 to three game. It's only a two-goal game, and I'm going, uh-oh, are we in trouble? Are we nervous? Are we going to have issues? What's going to happen? Well, Stasny already had two goals. Mark Stone already had two goals. And you got to factor one of those guys is going to get a, a hat trick, right? Why not? Well, at 13.57 in the third period, his sixth goal of the playoffs, Mark Stone, assisted by Paul Stasny and Shea Theodore, came in and juked Martin Jones. It was dirty. And he got his first career hat trick can you believe that it's the first career hat trick for a vegas golden knights member in the playoffs but mark stone the 9.5 million dollar year guy and this was his first ever hat trick congratulations stoner congratulations second line really six goals and a bunch of points from the second line that was awesome like san jose doesn't know what to do they can they can shift their line but then they got to cover the marchy wild bill and riley smith line and now maybe in game four, they might have to worry about the Nikita gusev tuck Eakin line. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it's a possibility. I think we're in San Jose's head. And I, and I knew that kind of going into this series that it was going to come down to goaltending. Flowers going to let in one or two bad goals probably here or there. He, hell, he let one in this one when he wasn't hugging the post. I mean, it was a bad goal. He admits it. He'll be like, yeah, I let in a bad goal. But it doesn't, like, bother him. He has so much playoff experience, and he's been around so long that most of these games don't really bother him. He can shake it off. Where flip the script, but San Jose, Martin Jones, dude, I, we are in his head. The fact that we scored within the first minute in all three periods in game three, and they didn't pull him because they pulled him in the last game, and if they pull him in this game, then what happens? They're going to just go to Dell and run Dell, the, their backup goalie, for the rest of the series? Jones is their number one guy. I've been saying it for weeks. The problem is, is the Vegas Golden Knights have kryptonite for Martin Jones. For whatever reason, our team owns him. And and to be plucked four games out of 14 or four, yeah, I think it's four out of 14. That's not very good numbers. Now, the other big story that happened in game three, and, and we've talked about it. I've been talking about it for a few weeks now. The issue is Ryan Reeves and Evander Kane. Now, Evander Kane's been running his mouth on the bench, and Reeves has been throwing it right back out there. And honestly, some of the times Reeves is probably the antagonizer. He's trying to get under Evander Kane's skin. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, Ryan Reeves, that's his job. His job is to be an enforcer. His job is to be an agitator. Now, uh, Joe Thornton, after game three, you know, gave an interview and he was, you know, pretty much picking on Reeves because Reeves had to fight a 30 goal score in Evander Kane. And uh, later on, Reeves was uh, on the Twitter talking shit about Thornton being old and Thornton better watch it because he's probably going to get suspended or definitely get fined. They might hook him up because he's Thornton. He's been in the league so long, but no, that's bullshit. Anyways, these guys have been jawing uh, in the regular season. They've been running their mouths. The problem is Evander Kane, and, and Thornton is right in this, Evander Kane's like a number one or number two line guy. It's kind of like Tom Wilson with the Washington Capitals. Tom Wilson does play on the first line. So 
there's not that many opportunities where you want your fourth line guys going up against another team's number one line. So the Wilson Reeves, you know, it takes a while before they get the lines shifted enough to where Reeves can get out there when Wilson's on the ice or vice versa. Well, the same thing is here with Kane. Problem is, is Kane goes out there and acts like a tough SOB unless if Reeves is on the ice. And then he comes back and he runs him out. Oh, I hit this guy or I did that. And Reeves is going, yeah, because you're a little bitch because you won't go out there when I'm out there. Well, finally in the third period, and again, I wasn't at the Fortress, so I couldn't see how it happened. But on TV, I don't know if Reeves jumped over the boards because Kane was out there or vice versa. But either way, in the third period, both of them were on the ice. And they kind of whacked each other's sticks, kind of going into the corner. And finally, Kane turned around and was like, man, I got to do it. And he dropped the gloves. And, of course, Revo dropped the gloves. And Revo's connected with a couple punches there. And then it kind of stopped for a second, reset. And then these guys just drew haymakers. I mean, each of them connected a couple times. At the end, Reeves got him and kind of slammed him to the ice and ended up on top of him. And and here's the best part. If you haven't seen it, you got to go on YouTube. Just type in Kane Reeves. I'm sure there's 100 videos of the fight. At, after the fight, Reeves has the biggest smile on his face as he's getting pulled off of Vander Kane by the officials. And Kane still looks a little pissed. He's still kind of running his mouth. Like, how does that make you feel? If you're a tough guy and you just get into a fight with this guy, and he's been under your skin. He's been pissing you off really all year. And then I just try and fight this guy. He connects with me a couple of times. And then he's got this shitty and grin, this big old smile on his face right after. I'm going, man, that's why I love Ryan Reeves. And if he wasn't on my team, I'd despise him because he is that good at what he does. And Joe Thornton wants to talk smack because Reeves doesn't score, you know, 30 goals. Uh, newsflash, Joe Thornton. That's not his job. His job isn't to score 30 goals. Kane's job is to protect your team, and uh, look what happened. I mean, you don't want to be messing with Ryan Reeves. I don't know. All right, here is the audio from all six goals, including the hat trick by Mark Stone, following game three of the Stanley Cup playoffs round one against the Sharks. Take a listen. Nate Schmidt, up ahead, Mark Stone, right to the net. Two patch already, couple of steps in, wrist on score! Five seconds into the power play! Max Pacioretty has made it 2 0. Here's Pacioretty, a wrist shot on the San Jones. Stassi on the rebound, a wrist shot, score! Paul Stassi, this line does it again! 21 seconds into the second! Stassi gains the line, drops for Theodore, and around the horn, it's Stone looking back to a top score! Paul Stasty on the deflection, his second goal of the period, and the Golden Knights have a 4 1 lead. The Redbirds here, Stone, and Marks is over, rich shot on the same Jones. Rebound score! I told you guys I wasn't going to do it, but I am going to do it on this one. Because Mark Stone got a hat trick, you got to hear from Mark Stone. And then I can't go a podcast without having Coach Gallant. So here is the interview following the 6-3 victory from Mark Stone, his first career hat trick, and then immediately followed by Coach Gerard Gallant talking about kind of the playoffs, talking about game three, how the series has been going. Take a quick listen to Stone and Gallant, and I'll talk to you guys on the other side. We've really been stressing that how, how important that is to our team. And each winning, and not just that, but also winning each period. You guys scored a goal in each period within the first, I think, 40 seconds of each period. Setting the tone on each period has to be important as well. Absolutely. Um, 
Uh, I think that um, as a whole, uh, we're trying to, to make sure that we're playing consistent. Uh, whether that's at the start of the period or at the end of the period, we want to make sure that we can roll our four lines and uh, and make sure that uh, we're not straying away from our game. Um, you know, when we play our best, uh, you see what happens, and uh, we have a chance to win. How exhilarating is a hat trick? <laughs> it's my first one, so uh, it's awesome. But uh, ultimately, a 6-3 win in this building is is better than anything I've ever experienced. Where does this fall on your list of achievements? <laughs> It's cool, but uh, ultimately, uh, right now, it's about winning hockey games. Um, the ultimate goal is to win in this league. So, um, yeah, we're happy that we're up 2-1, to one, but um, we're obviously going to celebrate for uh, a little bit. But, uh, you know, once midnight hits, we got to get ready for, for Tuesday night. How do you make sure that you're ready for Tuesday night the way you're ready for tonight? Have a good day tomorrow. Um, you know, I'm not sure what our, our schedule is going to be, but um, rest, recover, um, over a little bit of tape, and, and be prepared. Um, we can't dwell on um, on a two, two to one lead. We want to uh, continue to get better, and it starts tomorrow. How well that line played both tonight and this series as a whole? Oh, they've been awesome. They obviously tonight scoring. Uh, I think the first shift every period with the green out, something like that. So they were outstanding tonight. They played really good, and they've been good all series long. So. Long way to go as yet, but uh, they played great so far. Ryan Quigley, SB Nation. Uh, Thornton hits Nosek up high with a hit. I uh, don't know if you saw it, your thoughts on the hit and if they're going to be. They'll look at it for sure. I mean, there's no doubt. So definitely a high hit to the head. So they'll look at it and we'll see what happens. Alan, it's Brent. <clears throat> Uh, Alan Snell, LVSportsBiz.com. Can you talk about a couple things? Number one, the quick goals in the first minute of every period coming out strong, and also the physical play of your team. Well, I thought, uh, obviously, you like to score every shift, and especially to open up a game, and coach says that every night, but it doesn't happen too often. So tonight we went out there and we found a way to get a couple goals early, obviously, and we carried the momentum a lot, so it was great to get those quick starts. But uh, I don't know, what was the second question, sir? That was a physical game, yeah. They, uh, you know, it was, uh, we played real discipline, and that's what my main concern is. We didn't take a whole lot of penalties tonight, and I thought we played a great game. Jesse Granger with The Athletic. You talked about that line with Stone, Stasny, and Patch Ready. Just the players that they are, how confident were you as a coach going into the playoffs that they were going to elevate their game this time of year? No, they're all good players and they're a good line. But, uh, again, playoffs is about your team. It's not about one line that's going to win a win a series for you. You need everybody going and everybody doing their job and that's what I, we expect from our players. It doesn't, one line's not going to carry it. So we need everybody going and that's what I want from my group. Alright Vegas Golden Knights fans, that's going to wrap up this week's VGK Rewind. What's on tap? Well, what's on tap? Simple. We got round one of the playoffs. Tuesday, tomorrow, Vegas Golden Knights take on San Jose Sharks at the Fortress for game four. Then you've got a game on Thursday, game five. It's Thursday or Friday? One of those two days. I'm not sure. Again, I'm doing this on the fly. We're taking on the Sharks again. Now, if the Vegas Golden Knights can win tomorrow, we'll have a 3-1 series lead. Could close it out in San Jose. Could close it out game six back at the Fortress. I will be back in case if there is a game six, which is good. But honestly, I'm here with my buddy David, and I told him, I says, like, if we could just keep winning, let's just keep winning. I know we want to go to the game. I know we're season ticket holders and we're down here on vacation, but if we can win in five, let's win in five and let's get rested and get ready for the next round. But either way, those are the games on tap. So we already did good, bad, and ugly. I said we weren't going to do funny shit fans say prior to VGK Rewind. Numbers don't lie. Do you want to do numbers don't lie? I don't think so. I don't have time or patience or energy to dig through all the stats. We talked about enough from the game, and I think that's enough for this week. Next week, if I have more time and if I'm in a better mood, um, then, yeah, we'll do numbers don't lie again. But for this week, we're not doing it. We've talked pretty much about everything. The only thing left is this week's what the puck. Now, this week's what the puck is um, It's going to be short and sweet. But before I dive into it, I guess I got to do a little bumper, right? So welcome to this week's episode. What the puck? Seriously, what? The Puck. All right, this week's What the Puck's going to be short and to the point. The Bug Eye Guy, yes, I'm in San Diego. I'm recording this podcast on location. In my drive from Las Vegas to San Diego, it's about four and a half, five, man, like a five-hour drive probably. Just got out of state line, literally 
just passed into the California freaking border. Now I'm in California. Run over a piece of metal or something in the road. I don't know. I didn't see it until I heard it. Right rear tire blown out. Now, we pulled off onto the side of the freeway, and there's a lot of traffic because it's Sunday. People are leaving Vegas, heading back to California. I break the, the tire loose. I get the spare out with the help of the wife. She's awesome. She helped. So now we got the spare tire. We've got the lug nuts loose. Here's my problem. I have a 2018 Dodge Ram. I've got a big size truck. And they give you this jack that is a little dinky-ass piece of shit jack that isn't going to jack up anything on the side of the road. So what do we have to do? I mean, I could change the tire. No. We had to wait. We had to call Geico and say, Geico, we need roadside assistance. And then they sent someone out there, and they asked all these questions. I mean, dude, all I need is a jack. And literally 50 minutes later, the cool thing is they sent me a text. They said at 937, the guy will be there. And they were late, but at 9.38, the dude showed up. To me, within a minute, that's an awesome time. He showed up. He says, how can I help you? I go, dude, I need a jack. He pulled the jack out, jacked up the truck. We had the tire off in, I don't know, 30 seconds. Had the other tire on. Literally, the guy was there for like four minutes, and he was like, man, you did all the work. I'm like, dude, I can change a tire. I just couldn't jack up the damn car. He goes, yeah, these jacks are I'm like, literally, the jack for my big-ass truck, like, you need blocks of wood or something in order to even get it up there in order to jack it up this was unacceptable dodge and for most car manufacturers you all use the same piece of shit jacks i get it i understand why you do it because they're small they fit under seats but newsflash they don't jack shit up and shout out to geico for showing up on time and and paying for the dude to come out there and jack up my car and and now i've got a a, a spare tire on my car i mean it is a full-size spare which is a good thing but it says temporary use, but I don't care. We drove down to San Diego. We got here, and I'll go get the tire fixed over the next couple days before I drive back. Other issue besides having a blowout, asshole drivers. Like, for most of you Vegas Golden Knights fans that are listening to this, you guys have you probably don't live in Vegas, or you've probably never driven from Vegas to California. Now, Vegas to California, I've done it hundreds of times over my life. Um it's kind of boring drive. I mean, you drive, once you get past state line, there's nothing for about an hour, and it's a little town called Baker, California that has the world's largest thermometer. But the town's kind of run down. I mean, you stop there to pee, get food, get uh, alien beef jerky or whatever, and then you keep on driving. About another hour, you come to Barstow. Barstow, California, it's a little bit bigger. Well, it's a lot bigger than Baker, but it's still out in the middle of nowhere. But they've got, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, all the restaurants and stuff, so that's that's Barstow. Then it's another 30 minutes to Victorville. And then that's kind of the split for the bug eye guy. Depending if I'm going to like to back to where I grew up or to Six Flags, then we would cut off in Victorville. Or we keep going straight. For San Diego, you keep going straight. You come down to Cajon Pass, and then you just keep on heading southbound damn near till you get to San Diego. That's what we did. We just beelined it and made it all the way here and just kept driving and driving. We did stop for a potty break, which kind of irks me. But getting back to the whole point of this, this is a long ride, two lanes, sometimes four lanes, sometimes two lanes. It kind of goes back and forth. There's a lot of truckers out there. And most people are doing, you know, the speed limit's, I don't know, 65 or 75. You know, I was doing 80. I think it was 65 at one point. And I had this cruise control set at 80. And I was just cruising. And people were blowing around me, cutting me off. I mean, I had to throw the, the bird a couple times, and the guy's kind of shaking. I'm like, dude, I'm giving you the bird because you damn near hit me. You made me slam on my brakes in order to let you cut me off. Like, you're an asshole. Like, and I just don't get it. Like, I understand people are in a hurry. People have their lives, and they need to hurry up and get home or get wherever they're going. But the difference between 65 and, and 100, I'm going 80. I'm 15 over. Is that not enough for you? And I'm not in the fast lane. I'm not the Toyota Prius sitting in the fast lane with the cruise control set at 70, pissed off everyone's going around him because he's going five miles an hour with the speed limit. I was doing 15 miles an hour over the speed limit. People cut me off, piss me off, and then factor in the fact that we had a blowout and we were an hour and 20 minutes behind schedule. It just it was not good. I'm pretty sure the wife was a little agitated by the time we got to the hotel. The bug eye guy was definitely agitated when we got to the hotel. That's what alcohol is for. So 
<laughs> and I don't drink much, but you got to do what you got to do to calm down, relax, and enjoy vacation. And then a few hours after that, you got to watch a stressful ass Vegas Golden Knights, a game you have season tickets for, and you're not at. But now today's a new day. Today's Monday. Today's an off day. Today's I got to take a nap. I got to hang out by the beach. The wife's over at the pool. The kids are swimming. Uh, the bug eye guy's in his car right now recording the podcast just to do the audio. And then I'll edit it by the pool later because I don't have a problem hanging out, just chilling out, working on the podcast. It's it's something I enjoy to do. And I wanted you guys, the Vegas Golden Knights fans, to still get an episode. I know I don't have all the extra stuff. I apologize I don't have all the extra stuff. But I'm having a good time. And I hope you guys are too. In fact, that about wraps it up. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode of the VGK. Oh, did you see that? I almost screwed up. Oh, I almost called it the old name. That's because I am literally sitting in my truck. Thanks for tuning in to episode 39 of Knights Nation podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please let a friend know. I've got uh, 38 other episodes available on Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, KnightsNation.Vegas, YouTube. Go take a listen. Check out my podcast. Uh, this one, again, I apologize that the format was a little bit different, and I apologize if the audio doesn't sound quite as good. I'm going to do my best to mess with it to make it sound pretty clear, but I apologize. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm recording this in my truck. Thank you. I needed to get an episode to you guys, and I feel much better now that I've recorded this, and I'm super excited. I can't wait for tomorrow, Game 4, Stanley Cup playoffs round one. Vegas Golden Knights need to hammer down. There's a good chance we might see Nikita Gusev make his NHL debut in the playoffs. That could be awesome. And if he doesn't play and we see someone like Nosek or Carpenter or Peary or Zykov, I'm okay with that too. You guys should be too. Fans that are going to the Fortress tomorrow, be loud, be proud. I was so excited. I was so proud of my fellow Vegas Golden Knights fans watching that crazy intro. Those lights that they put up. Okay, I know there's a whiteout in uh, Winnipeg, and I know there's a red out or whatever they want to call it in Calgary, but those yellow lights, those gold lights, that was phenomenal looking. That I don't know how much that cost them, but I don't care. That was awesome. They should do that all the time. And hopefully um, in the second round when I get back to the Fortress, uh, they'll have those. But if not, I don't care. It was cool. Kudos to the Vegas Golden Knights management team. Kudos to the Vegas Golden Knights entertainment team. Kudos to the Vegas Golden Knights for kicking butt on the ice the last two games. Kudos to GM GM George McPhee for bringing in uh, Nikita Gusev from the KHL. Kudos to head coach Gerard Gallant for keeping his team in check, even though we're taking some dumb penalties. He's keeping the team focused. And kudos to Vegas Golden Knights Nation. Thank you guys for tuning in to episode 39. I really do appreciate it. I'm super, super excited for the rest of the playoffs. You guys should be too. But now I'm done. I'm going to go jump in the pool and enjoy vacation. Vegas Golden Knights fans, I love you. And as always, duh, bug eye guy. Go Knights, go. You've been listening to the Knights Nation Podcast. For a full recap of this podcast or to listen to past episodes, visit KnightsNation.Vegas. Your host, the VGK Bug Eye Guy, is available on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook at VGK Bug Eye Guy and at KnightsNationLV. LV.